Hello there! The recent pandemic brought about by the spread of the COVID-19 has caused a lot of disturbances in our workplace and in our community. Among those greatly affected are our learners, especially the young ones, whose classes were suddenly cut short due to lockdown. We are opening our classes on August 24 this year. Many of our parents and other stakeholders are asking, are we ready for school or are the kids safe to go to school? This school year will be different as we adapt to the new normal situation in education. First and foremost, we care about the health and safety of our learners and teachers and all personnel as well. But learning and education must continue even as we face this global crisis. I am Teacher Gina and I am Teacher Hill and we are here today to present to you our Divisions Learning Continuity Plan. Our very own Deputy Secretary, Ma'am Leonor Briones, has pointed out that, I quote, Education must continue even in times of crisis, whether it may be a calamity, disaster, emergency, quarantine just like what we are experiencing nowadays, or even war, end quote. We, at the Division of City of San Fernando, commit ourselves to ensure the educational continuity despite this crisis. All efforts are now geared towards the delivery of the most essential learning competencies to all learners using appropriate teaching and learning modalities. Specifically, our division is all set to achieve these four-pronged objectives. First, we need to prepare our schools to deliver the most essential learning competencies through appropriate teaching learning modalities. Second, we need to ensure that we adhere to health standards for COVID-19 mitigation, such as social distancing and wearing of face masks. Third, we need to provide the needed training to concerned personnel to effectively carry out the LCP. And lastly, it is important to forge partnerships with possible collaborators in the delivery of the curriculum during this pandemic. How do we achieve these objectives? Let us count the ways. First, the Division of City of San Fernando has made an analysis of the strengths, weaknesses, threats, and opportunities or SWOT. And here's what we have found out. The best learning modality for the school year 2020 to 2021 is distance learning. With the use of printed modules supplemented by TV-based programming. Some online platforms will also be used for those with access to the internet. Since face-to-face -face classroom interaction is not possible at this time, most parents preferred using printed modules for their children's learning at home. We also found out that 98% of Fernandino households have television at home. So, it is best to utilize TV to complement these printed modules, especially for younger learners from kindergarten up to grade 2. Since majority of our learners are digital natives who can learn well with online learning mode, various online platforms may sometimes be used for those who have internet access at home. Second, the division has come up with three types of plans moving towards the Comprehensive Technology Integration Plan or CTIP as we prepare for the next school years. The short-term plan addresses the immediate needs to deliver the curriculum this August, while the medium-term and long-term plans guide us to prepare for the adoption of online learning in the coming school years. The CTIP is a proactive stance as we envision for online learning as a possible learning delivery mode in the succeeding school years. With the support of the local government unit through the Special Education Fund, the CTIP is deemed necessary not only in case of a pandemic but in cases of disruption or suspension of classes due to natural calamities which frequently occur in our country. Let me show you now these plans. The short-term plan addresses all four objectives with a timetable from June 2020 until May 2021. To realize objective number one, the division will adapt the detailed lesson plan or DLPs as the printed modules for distribution to learners starting in August. These DLPs contain the most essential learning competencies 
set by the DepEd Central Office and contextualized at the division level. They are written by our teachers with the guidance and mentoring of the Education Program Supervisors and are organized by subject area, by grade level, and by quarter. The existing learner materials, teacher guides, and curriculum guides will serve as references in the preparation of DLPs. Before reproduction and distribution, DLPs have to undergo quality check by the School Quality Assurance Team. Each DLP is a complete set of lessons with exercises, worksheets, or practice sheets following the explicit instruction approach to learning. Each learner will receive DLPs for 7 weeks in a quarter in all subject areas based on a schedule set by the school. The 8th week is set for the quarterly assessment. So, we are calling all parents to get in touch with the school where their children are enrolled in for the announcements on distribution, retrieval, or submission schedule. Our school heads and teachers can always be reached through phone calls and text messages or through Facebook chat and messenger. To realize objective number two, the division came up with three programs to institutionalize the new normal at the school level. The first program is the one-week curriculum with COVID-19 integration prepared by the education program supervisors and passed through quality check by the Division Learning Resource Management section. These will be distributed to the learners on the first week of the first quarter. The second program focuses on the writing and distribution of pamphlets or checklists containing the new normal health protocols, behavior, and practices. While the third program is concerned with boosting learners' immune system through information campaign materials to heighten the awareness of our learners and parents on COVID-19 and a modified menu for a school feeding program. All these programs will be monitored and evaluated by the division. For objective number three, online trainings will be conducted to ensure that the learning continuity plan is carried out by all concerned personnel, especially the teachers. One is the Integrated Teachers Quarterly Mentoring or ITQM. The ITQM for the first and second quarters was already done by the respective education program supervisors starting last May 18. For the third and fourth quarters, these are scheduled later this year. Online trainings will also be done for the preparation of TV-based learning programs, control measures against COVID-19 infection, new normal in school health programs, and technical assistance in the preparation of other learning materials. For the last objective, the division has tied up with the local TV station for the airing of educational programs for kinder, grades 1 and 2. An action plan for this program is already in place. In fact, the program's teaser has already been aired over CLTV 36 in June 3 during the virtual launching of the 2020 Brigada Escuela and Oplan Balik Escuela. The educational TV program is called Fernandino Kids TV. There will be time slot of one hour each for kinder, grade 1, and grade 2 to be aired for five days a week from Monday to Friday. It will be aired starting in August. The selection of instructional video lessons for Fernandino Kids TV will be done through a search for the model DLPs for quarter 1 and will be delivered by the best demonstration teachers. They will be first trained on the proper delivery of lesson in video format before they start with video shooting. A production team will be created to lead in the preparation, production, and post-production activities of Fernandino Kids TV. Advocacy and resource generation activities will be done to disseminate information about the program as well as seek funds for the airtime. Of course, the efforts of those involved in the program will be recognized and be given appropriate merit. Let's move on to the medium-term plan which focuses on attaining the first and third objectives. Here, the division intends to adopt a learning management system both for e-learning and offline learning, several capability-building activities for concerned personnel 
have already been lined up. Selection, pilot testing, and finalization of the learning management system are also scheduled. For the instructional video lessons for offline learning, video shooting and editing, reproduction and distribution will all be done at a scheduled time between May 2021 and May 2022. This time, let's talk about the division's long-term plan as we continue to deliver quality, affordable, and accessible education to all amidst any form of crisis. The long-term plan, which is set until the year 2023, focuses on utilizing the Special Education Fund, or SEF, for the provision of technology infrastructure needed to support e-learning. Under this plan, the division intends to provide laptops and monthly internet allowance to all teachers, establish satellites for community access, hire tech ed support personnel, and provide netbooks or iPad to learners on a 1 is to 5 ratio. Under this plan, e-learning and e-teaching for blended learning will also be institutionalized. There you go! Our dear friends and colleagues in the education sector, we have crafted our plans based on existing conditions. We implement them and we monitor them to ensure that learning continues even in the worst possible situation. Para sa bata, para sa edukasyon.